In the age of COVID-19, RVs have become the perfect getaway vehicle for those looking to get away from home without having to worry about the COVID risks that present themselves when visiting a hotel. Or for that matter, for those who are total introverts and don't like dealing with other people, like me. In the US, there are few recreational vehicle manufacturers as well known as Winnebago. In existence since the late 1950s, it has become synonymous with recreational vehicles as Airstream has become synonymous with travel trailers, or if you're in other parts of the world, caravans. And with good reason, it's the third largest RV company in North America. We've seen Winnebago feature in iconic movies and TV shows. It was a 1987 Winnebago Chieftain that British comedy duo Simon Pegg and Nick Frost were driving when they encountered the weed-smoking, free-cursing alien Paul in the movie of the same name. It was the Winnebago RV that went flying across the screen in that 1975 Disney fantasy film Escape to Witch Mountain. And the Eagle Five in Spaceballs? That was also a Winnebago chieftain, but that one had wings. Many of you will think of the traditional all-American RV that's as long as a bus and as wide as a British country lane when we mention the word Winnebago. But the firm also specializes in a range of vehicles, ranging from that full-size Class A all the way through to Class C. And for those in Europe unfamiliar with the different sizing, Class A is the one that's closer to a full-size coach, while Class C is smaller than a Class A, usually built on an existing chassis cab from a mainstream truck company. But Class B, well, that's what most Europeans would call a camper van, essentially a conversion of an existing mid-size van like a Mercedes Sprinter or a Ford Transit. One thing Winnebago hasn't done so far, though, is offer an electric model. But at the Florida RV Super Show earlier this week, Winnebago took its first step towards making that happen, unveiling a concept vehicle called the Winnebago ERV, an all-electric Class B motorhome that hints at a future vehicle the company might make. The company was a tad coy about exact specifications, but today I'm here to tell you what we know about the vehicle, ask if its existing specifications are enough to get RVers excited, examine what could be improved, and see how it compares to the competition around the world. Specs first. From teaser images posted before the reveal, lots of us in the automotive media world expected the ERV to be based on Ford's recently launched e-Transit. But when the reveal happened, it became apparent that it was not. Instead, the ERV is based on an all-electric cab chassis transit from Lightning E-Motors, with an 86 kilowatt hour usable battery pack that Winnebago says provides up to 125 miles of real-world range while powering onboard electrical systems within the RV. If you look at the Lightning E-Motors website, you'll notice that it currently offers two battery pack options for its transit, an 80 kilowatt hour, 73.6 kilowatt hour usable battery pack and a 120 kilowatt hour pack, 110.4 kilowatt hours usable. It's either produced a new pack for Winnebago, which is unlikely, or Winnebago is using the larger pack with reserve power set aside for internal electronics, something we think is more likely than a dedicated pack. And frankly, that feels like a smart move since it means you're always going to have power to run the RV. That said, I'd love it if you could use the onboard control system to decide how much power is reserved for travel and how much for living. Which brings me to the inside. Unlike most Class B RVs, which usually have onboard power inverters to provide mains power from an onboard 12 or 24 volt leisure battery bank, utilizing 12 or 20 volt DC power for lights and specialist appliances, the Winnebago ERV uses a high power onboard inverter to produce 110 volt AC direct from the vehicle's traction battery pack. This powers the induction stovetop and the refrigerator, although the company notes that the latter can also operate on a 12 volt DC power system when required. Meanwhile, the water heater and roof mounted air conditioner operate at 350 volts DC, eliminating the need for a dedicated high power inverter and keeping system losses to an absolute minimum. Since Winnebago believes that the ERV represents a new wave of RV fans, folks who want to be able to camp but also want to remain connected, there's a high power onboard wireless internet connection and quote, residential grade, 
wireless system, as well as an integrated touchscreen setup within the vehicle to help owners manage their vehicle's power load and energy efficiency. The latter can also be managed via Wi-Fi through a smartphone or tablet app. From first glance, the Winnebago ERV concept looks like a really nice place to spend time. The Lightning E-Motors chassis features CCS quick charging capabilities up to 80 kilowatts, and the Level 2 onboard charger should be capable of up to 13.2 kilowatts AC charging. But let's tackle the elephants in the room. First, this is just a prototype. Winnebago executives were asked the price of this particular vehicle and declined to say, noting that it isn't ready for market yet and is rather a demonstration of a future possible vehicle. That's not exactly unusual for a prototype or concept, but some back of the napkin maths suggests that this won't be cheap. For example, it's Solace Class B, which is based on an internal combustion Dodge Ram Promaster, starts from $115,000 and change, and I'm guessing that you would be adding another $30,000 on top for an all-electric drivetrain. But then again, RVs aren't traditionally cheap, unless you're buying a 30-year-old model and working on it yourself, or in fact doing a DIY conversion of an existing vehicle. And unless you're really good at DIY, those options are unlikely to give you a similar finish. The next big issue? Range. Winnebago says, based on its own internal customer data, that the majority of new RV buyers prefer to make trips under 200 miles, 321 kilometers. And since it envisages this vehicle will be purchased rather more by new RV owners and established road warriors, it says the range of the ERV will meet 54% of the needs of new RV owners. Of course, a rapid charging stop of about half an hour would extend that range easily, so as long as you're willing to take your time on a road trip, this could be a great choice if it comes to market. But for large parts of North America, parts away from coastal and arterial routes where you're wanting to go on holiday, there's limited charging infrastructure, and I could see range being an issue there. For Europe, where travel distances tend to be smaller, I think this would be an ideal vehicle, but then I'd be surprised if or when this makes it into production that we'd actually see it go on sale in Europe. Why not a larger range? Well, that's pretty simple. An RV has a lot to carry, a lot more onboard weight than your average vehicle, including things like water tanks, furniture and all your gear. And of course, your average RV, which tends to be based on a commercial van, has the aerodynamic quality of a brick which is why most electric vans and any vehicle based on them are struggling to hit the same kind of real-world ranges as most new electric cars. So let's look at the competition. Well, in Europe, it's possible to get a Nissan ENV200 outfitted as a camper van. And of course, we just heard that Mercedes-Benz is working with a third-party outfitter to produce a camper variant of the EQV electric van. And of course, Volkswagen is also rumored to be working on a camper van variant of its ID Buzz, which is coming to market very soon. Camper variants of other midsize electric vans are rumored to be on the way too, but again, they're mostly outfitted custom affairs. In the US though, there are some alternatives, many of whom focus on classic Volkswagen camper van conversions. Although, if you do want something more modern, Maxwell vehicles on the West Coast do conversions of existing Ram vehicles, including camper variants, with a range of roof and wheelbase options and battery packs. The highest spec models are capable of in excess of 175 miles, 281 kilometers on the highway, and have a 300 kilowatt motor and up to 200 kilowatts CCS quick charging capability. All in all then, the Winnebago ERV has potential. It's got an amazing interior and high hopes, but we'd like to see a production version increase its real world range to at least that of the Maxwell E Pro before many people would want to camp in it. That's it for today. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our Discord chat room. Make sure as well that you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two, and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure that you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month patron supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Jason Bordor, 
Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tazlet and the Gone, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness and Danny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hennersley, and Ian. If you're feeling left out, you can join Patreon at the link below, or you can show us your support through Bitcoin, Ko-fi, or buying something from our swag store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!